Good morning, everybody. It's Friday during lockdown. And once again, it's my privilege to invite you into my office at the Chancery in Cape Town for a brief faith reflection. As I've been doing for a few weeks now, I'd like to start by praying for the fruitfulness of the, of the upcoming Synod of Bishops in 2023. Let us pray. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and do not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in our every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. The title of the reflection comes from our first reading for today's Mass. Um, and the title is, Take Courage, the Lord is with us. The first reading is from the prophet Haggai. Haggai is one of the lesser known books in the Bible. Although not as famous as the major prophets, Haggai appeared at a strategic time in the life of the nation. Just to mention some of the background, after the return from the exile with the intention of rebuilding the temple, and we find this in the first chapter of Ezra, verses 1 to 4, the people of God experienced interference from their neighbors who were opposed to their re-establishment. As a result, many of the chosen people gave up on their faith. They started to experience a sense of hopelessness and lacked energy for their project of rebuilding the temple. All this led to a delay of about 20 years in rebuilding the temple. The prophet of God is never far away when God's people experience despair and Haggai appears on the scene speaking words of hope with such conviction that within five years the temple was rebuilt. In all this, through the careful use of rhetoric, the first reading for today's Mass shows that God is in charge. Take the reading and count the number of times in a text of a mere ten verses how many references there are to the Lord speaking. We know from our reading of scripture that God's word has power. It brings about what it signifies. The attentive Bible reader will be alert to this and will know that God is on a rescue mission. Another significant repetition is take courage. Used three times in one verse. Haggai 2 verse 4. This is translated from be strong in the original and conveys the notion of prevailing and of being firm. Notice it is not to act strong but to be strong. This is the type of strength which comes from within. It is not a decorative or a superficial quality which one acquires through the use of protein supplements for example but an essential component of someone believing in God. It refers to inner strength. The reason for the strength, according to the prophet, is simply because God is with his people. God is described in the text as the God of hosts, meaning of armies. This is a literal reference to the struggles they faced with their neighbors and when read with the next verse we would have called to mind the way in which the Egyptian army 
was rendered powerless. The text can strengthen us during our moments of crisis with the pandemic having stripped us of our security and our energy. We have to face despair and hopelessness. Uncertainty can certainly undermine our well-being. The message is that no matter how hopeless the experience of alienation is, there will be a new beginning. We will pick up the pieces and reconstruct our lives. But the trick is never to give up. We are called to hold firm simply because we are people of faith. We must never give up on Christ as he will never give up on us. The text calls us not to fear. That's Haggai chapter 2 verse 5. This reminds us of a prayer we say fairly often in the liturgy, normally as a responsorial psalm, during times of sorrow and alienation. This prayer is the much read and much revered 23rd Psalm, which came out of King, King David's experience of deep sorrow and alienation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The syntax of the original indicates that because the Lord is my shepherd, or because the Lord is at my head, I shall not want. The fourth verse of the psalm refers to a journey through a dark valley. Psalm 23 verse 4. The word for dark in the original indicates the deepest darkness the human heart can ever know. Even there, God is with us. And should we not feel his presence as strongly as we would like to, let us call to mind the abandonment Jesus felt when he was on the cross, asking in effect, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15, 34. The alienation which we feel can be a means of union with Christ, the struggling Christ on the cross. The voice of faith reminds us that in our feelings of alienation, God is still in the same place he occupied when his son was on the cross. Our first reading encourages us to be strong and to listen to the voice of faith. Having faith is one thing. Allowing the faith to work in us is something else altogether. And for that to happen, we have no choice but to Stand firm, be strong, and take heart. And I give you numerous texts in the uh, uh, text that accompanies this video clip. Our first reading from the prophet Haggai speaks meaningfully during our time of distress. Let us pray. Father, give us the grace to stand firmly in our faith tradition when life becomes difficult. With faith, help us to cope and also to help others who are in distress. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, your homes and your families and remain with you forever, giving you the strength that you need. Thank you. May God bless you.